ever had a life experience where someone hurt your heart to the point that you could not forgive them? It was in the mid-1960s, East Orange, New Jersey, where I grew up. My mom and her younger sister, my Aunt Rosie, had been planning for months a surprise 70th birthday party for my grandma, Marie Rizzoli. Now my grandma, at 17, had come over from Italy and landed, like many others, on Ellis Island in New York. But she had the gumption and wherewithal to begin a life where not only creating a family, but a circle of friends that loved her dearly, especially me. My mom and Aunt Rosie had spent days preparing these savory, wonderfully smelling Italian dishes. My Uncle Johnny, my Aunt Rosie's husband, was busy gathering up and bringing hauling in tables and chairs to set up in our backyard. The house I grew up in was on a cul-de-sac and we had a beautifully groomed semicircular yard, perfect for this huge family event. All of us were so excited about it. Aunt Rosie and Uncle Johnny's kids were off playing in the yard somewhere on the swing set or kicking balls around. I, of course, I was also helping set up and so were my older brother and sisters. We were so excited. Around five o'clock, the dishes started coming out to be laid out on the serving table. Another family friend brought my grandmother in. Whoa! She was so surprised, everyone. Happy birthday, Maria! Oh my gosh, tears of joy came down her face. She never expected anything like that. There was someone missing from this scene. My antisocial father. You see, he used to hide himself in the basement in a corner where he had set up a workbench and a desk. No one really knew what he did down there. He was an avid reader. So most often, he was reading one of his stacks of books that he had collected. I'm sure he heard the buzz of people laughing and talking and, of course, the smell of the food when he emerged. He was probably shocked to see how many people were gathered in his backyard. I was sitting across a table for my Aunt Rosie, chatting away. Who knows what the topic was, but I love talking to Aunt Rosie. She always gave me that focused attention. When I felt this, I'm, it's like, it's my father. I want you to clean up all these tables. Well, of course, the little kids had eaten and then run off to go back where they were playing. So I, I said, it's okay, Dad. I'll clean them up as soon as I'm done talking to Aunt Rosie, okay? So Aunt Rosie and I got back involved in our conversation when she said, Hey, Maureen, I loved your mom's meatballs. <laughs> Can you go get me some more? I, it, they were just, I, I just did the best she's ever made. Okay, not a problem. Picked up her dish, walked over to the serving table, when all of a sudden I felt a sting on my face, down on the ground, and I looked up and my father was ready to punch me again in the face, when all of a sudden my Uncle Johnny came around and pulled his arms behind him, and it's like, get out of here, leave her alone! This was not the first time I had been slammed to the ground by my father. However, it was the first time in front of a yard full of people, friends and family. The hush was unbelievable, except the sobs of my grandmother. 
He did it again. He did it again. He had interrupted so many other family gatherings that nobody ever wanted him around at anything. Not Christmas, not Thanksgiving, not Easter, none. He was out of our lives. But this party was at his house. He had to show up and do his rage again. But I could not claim my power over him. For 20 years, I've hated this man to the point of I could not restore the broken pride that he created in front of all these people. It wasn't until I moved here 30 years ago to Yakima that I met this incredible woman who was like my other mother, Yvonne. She knew of my childhood pain. And she once said to me, she goes, Maureen, when are you ever going to get over this? When are you going to forgive your dad? You can't forget what he did, but you've got to forgive him. That's how you're going to claim your power. So she suggested a spiritual healing. What's that? So one afternoon, I took some time off from work. Yvonne came over to the house. She sat me down and she said, I want you to visualize. Visualize a place that you love to be as a child. And I remembered where it was. It was a park in New Jersey. With, on Easter Sunday, Uncle Johnny would take us and his kids and we would all see the beautiful cherry blossoms and a lake of pond actually out in front. And she says, now visualize a picnic table, a bench, a picnic bench. You on one end, and your dad on the other. It's like, oh God, I don't want to be that close to him. And then she said, picture Jesus in the middle with his arms around both of you. The only way to claim your power, Maureen, is when you know that your dad was loved and is loved just like you. Forgiveness happened at that moment. It was at that moment, in that visualization, I claimed my power over unforgiveness. I don't know what your faith is, and that's okay. But my story to you, I hope illustrates that you are loved. Whoever you hate or dislike in your life, who have, has hurt you, is loved by God. That's how you claim your power.